I think one thing we know to be true about professional wrestling is that retirements are typically one massive work. Even sometimes the ones that are allegedly caused by injury. Give it time and you'll see the guys back in the ring again, chasing one more big payday, one more shot at glory, one more moment in the spotlight. I suppose when you spend so much of your life doing one thing, it's really hard to transition to that next phase of your life, and that itch to perform is always there. Now there has always been a part of me that was truly hoping that when Shawn Michaels said he was done after WrestleMania 26, retiring in 2010, that it would truly be curtains. So long, sayonara. We'll see you for special appearances here and there. Enjoy the next phase of your life and keep it moving and let the fans hold on to their good memories and let's focus on the next generation. And a part of me should have known that Shawn Michaels, even being Shawn Michaels, is still a wrestler, so it is truly hard to let it go. And retirement is one big work. But I thought, you know what, maybe. He trotted out this line for so long about he was ready to move on to the next phase of his life. You know, he respected The Undertaker. He respected WWE. Didn't want to be like that. Didn't want to keep going on long past the ability where he could perform at a certain level physically without feeling like he robbed the fans and all of this and all of that, which sounds great in theory. Which again, when we're talking about professional wrestling, we should know these guys who have spent an entire living trying to work people are usually full of shit. And Shawn Michaels most certainly has a long, proud catalog that validates that he, just like so many others, are full of shit. Hogan, full of shit. Austin, full of shit. Brock Hart, full of shit. The vast majority of these guys are full of it. So we should know that. But there was still that part of me that was hoping, you know what? Let it be. What a great way to close out his career, the last three WrestleManias. You work Ric Flair's retirement match, and there we go, at WrestleMania 24. Then you absolutely tear down the house in what many people feel is the greatest WrestleMania match of all time with him and Taker at 25. And then you steal the show again, main eventing WrestleMania 28. Swan song, curtain, celebration, tears, on to the next phase of your life. <sighs> now for me, I've always appreciated Shawn Michaels as a talent, but I've never really viewed him as the true legend or icon that a lot of people do, especially the hardcore fans, especially those that like to talk about wrestling a lot on the interwebs, similar to Bret Hart. Talents can do good things, but they were never the true guys. They were not true franchise players. They were only the franchise players when they were the biggest fish in a small pond. And when you think about it, when Shawn Michaels was at the top, the true top of WWE, you're talking about the mid-90s where the WWF was getting their asses kicked by WCW in the ratings. And then after 2002, where he was on top for several years, even though you could say that was the decade of destruction of John Cena, Shawn Michaels was still a top guy. Slowly, the audience dwindled and diminished over the years. And even then, he was still not that franchise bedrock guy. He was a guy, a notable guy, a star, but never really like a super duper mega star. Go back to the Hogan era. Go back to the Attitude era, the two most profitable, successful eras in WWF slash E history. And in one, he was a part of a high-flying tag team for just a short cup of coffee during that stretch, if you want to be honest. And then in the Attitude Era, he was basically non-existent, other than occasionally being, what, the general manager or the commissioner or whatever the hell. It was like he kind of held the fort from the bridge to Hogan and Austin and Rock and got out of the way for the guys that really made that money. So I hate when a few years back they did, like, the 50 greatest of all time and Shawn Michaels was number one. This was the ultimate political bullshit of curtain jerking and circle jerking to HBK, HB Shizzle, and how great of an in-ring performer he was. 
Who cares if fewer people paid to watch him, if fewer people went to go see him, if he had less of an impact? And I'm not trying to sit here and say that Shawn Michaels didn't have an impact on wrestling. I'm not trying to say that he didn't have a great impact on the business. But he's not an all-time great. He just isn't. I'm sorry. Him and his buddy God are both massively overrated in the grand scheme of things. They absolutely are. But like him being number one, like of all the people in all the history, Shawn Michaels is number one, get that. It's like even when people talk about, oh, he's Mr. WrestleMania, da 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 da. For what? All the mid-card matches he worked over the years? Okay, he had a few really nice WrestleMania matches. So fucking what? Either Taker, who went all those years without losing a WrestleMania match, is Mr. WrestleMania, or Hogan is the guy that headlined and marqueed the first nine of the fuckers, and then comes back in 2002 and steals the show with The Rock in Toronto. That's a Mr. WrestleMania. Take a work in two plus decades, being undefeated. That's Mr. WrestleMania. Having a couple of good matches against Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho and Bret Hart, to me, doesn't make him Mr. WrestleMania. Just makes you a really good performer that had some clutch performances on some big stages, and that's cool, and that's great. So I've never really been itching and dying for Shawn Michaels to come back to the ring. So make that known, full disclosure, a little bit of bias there, and that's fine. At least I acknowledge and admit my bias. But I will give my respect where respect is due. He was a great in-ring performer. But it has also been eight and a half damn years since his last match in WWE. And now, he's back. Rah, rah, oh, baby, Shawn Michaels is back. The heartbreak kid. Turn up the man for some sweet shit music. Ah, 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 shut the hell up. Like, this is how bad and pathetic it's gotten. Is that the WWE has to dust off a relic, a fossil like Shawn Michaels who just like me looks more like cancer patient Kane at this point than a legitimate big star professional wrestler, sports entertainer, whatever the hell you want to call him. After being gone for almost a decade and just making appearances here and there, we're so removed from him being a wrestler at this point that why would you want to see him work again? Why would you want to see him wrestle again? Why? And when you look at the possibility and the potential of what they might be building up to for him for WrestleMania, what, so he can have another match against Taker at Mania? What's the story here? You said if you don't beat The Undertaker, you don't have a career. You didn't beat him, your career was supposed to be over. But now all of a sudden, almost a decade later, when Taker is a beaten down, broken down has-been, now you want revenge? It's like a couple of angry neighbors freaking get off my yard! I'm going to deal with the clown slaughter! It's kind of what it feels like. Or what, the match is going to be God? So that way we can see Shawn Michaels only somewhat capably carry a match as Triple H is sucking the oxygen out of the arena? Out of the stadium? We're going to build to that? I heard it felt like there have been opportunities in previous years to bring Shawn Michaels back in a certain spot and have him face somebody. And right now, at this particular moment in time, it just doesn't feel like there's anybody. It's just another example that WWE can't make their own stars, so they got to go back to the way back well to try and resuscitate a fucking fossil to try and get by. I have no interest whatsoever in seeing Shawn Michaels be a half-ass Shawn Michaels. I have no interest in seeing yet another old, washed-up, has-been, former WWE star go up there and have a mediocre to less to mediocre to flat-out shit-fest match. Especially if it's just going to be a thing where you're not using him to elevate somebody, you're not raising the profile of somebody, if it's just going to be some freaking nostalgia pop from the fucking past like Taker or fucking God, ugh. And I swear to God, ugh, on everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. We saw enough of Triple H and Shawn Michaels throughout the decade of the 2000s. I don't never need to see that again. And as far as The Undertaker, we've been there, we've done that two straight years. 
There's no need for that. Unless it is somebody new, somebody fresh, somebody that you're looking to potentially elevate. Then Shawn Michaels to me serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever. And even when you're involving him on your shows like Raw and so forth, you can see now the diminishing return. He is really serving no purpose. And this is what the WWE does. WWE ruins everything. They take a guy like Shawn Michaels, a Hall of Famer, an alleged legend and all of this. The news of him coming back in wrestling again should be a big freaking deal. But there's not really a build to it. They just kind of throw it out there. And instead of making it something really special, like he makes a surprise entrance at the Royal Rumble and he's back and he's working a program to WrestleMania, you're going to give the first match away to what, fucking Saudi Arabia? In November? That's how desperate this company is for money current state. The Saudis, just like the U.S. government, tell us what they want and we drop trial, bend over, take it up the ass, with Desert Dicks and all, and they say, give us this, and WWE is like, oh, yes, 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 absolutely, of course, whatever you want, oh, super kick, oh, baby! What the fuck? Only the WWE can take something like Shawn Michaels wrestling a match for the first time in eight and a half damn years, coming out of retirement, and make them feel like it's no big fucking deal at all. And when you do it at an international glorified house show, when you can't figure out how to write yourself out of a freaking paper bag or out of a corner, it's not a surprise to see how WWE ruins everything. I want to see something different. I want to see fresh. I want to see new. I want to see the company take chances. I want to see them rock the boat. What I don't want to see are guys that are a decade plus past their prime going out there for one little last blast of fucking glory. And some of you might say, well, what about Sting? Well, what about Goldberg? Goldberg had been gone so long, but the moment felt right. The story was right. Sting, until it came time to actual execution of the WrestleMania match and so forth, the moment felt right. And there was a significant appeal, even at his age, current state, to have Sting make an appearance in Vince's company. There was an appeal there to have Goldberg have one more short run. But you look at Shawn Michaels, to me, there's just not that same appeal. Because a lot of fans have now gotten to the point where they understand that this really doesn't serve any long-term purpose. If you wanted to see Shawn Michaels feud with The Undertaker, you just go pop up fucking YouTube and go back to the 90s and the 2000s. If you wanted to see freaking geriatric X, you don't need it in 2018. We took our metal up. We ate our friend bowls of crackling oat bran. We got our probiotics. We got our Viagra! Let's get rid of this sucker! Ah, fuck this. Let Shawn Michaels be. Maybe he needs the money, I don't know. And I don't care. All I do know is, is I don't give a crap. I don't want to see him wrestle again. And I have a feeling that I'm not the only one that that even includes some of the Shawn Michaels fanboys. At some point in time, the WWE's got to let the past be the past, especially when that past is not being used to prop up and elevate and change your future. These are the moves of a desperate company. These are the moves of a pathetically lazy company. And when lazy companies make moves, they don't bear fruit. Just rotten fruit. Nothing long-term good comes of it. And that's exactly what this is going to be. It's going to be such a massive waste of what a few years ago could have been a really big, huge deal. You missed the boat an opportunity now, and now I'm not the only one that doesn't want to see Shawn Michaels back.